Every January, communities across the country are required to hold a point-in-time homeless count. The goal is to find and count as many people living in homelessness as possible. The data is used for communities to plan their services and also to secure grants to provide more services. Danica has a look at this year's point-in-time count. This week, volunteers spent a day walking around the county looking for people who are homeless. Every year, HUD asks communities around the country to count those folks that they know who are dealing with homelessness. The annual point-in-time homeless count happens across the country every January. As a community, I am charged with getting everybody organized, um, getting the volunteers lined up, dedicating places where, for them to go, designating some team leaders or, or experienced volunteers who have gone out in years past and have actually run into folks who are homeless to conduct the count. A training for these volunteers was held this week. Volunteers are community members or employees of organizations that might deal with homeless populations. Patrick works at a local food shelf and will be volunteering for the count this year. Both what I see every day in my job uh, at my organization uh, with uh, at the food shelf where we serve a lot of uh, a number of homeless people. Uh, but it's also just uh, driven by the simple reality that housing is, uh, is critical to stability. Last year, more than 150 people in Anoka County were identified as homeless during the count, with 48 of them living outside. You really can't, it's much, much more difficult to do anything in life if your housing is not stable. Another 104 people were counted living in shelters last year. There's a tendency to have the, or, have the world see it as sort of an urban issue and not a suburban or an exurban issue. But I think uh, uh, there's lots of evidence to show that there's plenty of homelessness, uh, people experiencing homelessness in suburban areas. And, and this, be, participating in this count helps us give uh, visibility to that presumably invisible problem. And another 252 people didn't have stable housing, but were staying with friends or family. There are a lot of different ways that people can experience homelessness, and this count hopes to find as many as possible. In recent past, we've had folks be found at various bus stations. Um, certainly, uh, some of the underpasses, um, parking ramps, um, you know, and a lot of the time, you don't see folks that are homeless because in the suburbs, we find that most folks are doubled up. But it's important that we still count those folks because they don't have their own place to call their own. It, it looks invisible because they're, they're homeless, but they're doubled up. They have a roof over their head, but it's a very unpredictable roof. And, 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 and then there's also a, a percentage of people who don't have a roof over their head at all. And, uh, you know, they're sleeping in parks, they're sleeping under picnic tables, they're sleeping in cars, uh, they're finding places that again, aren't designed for people, but they make use of them. The state is really interested in finding out who is doubled up in that perspective. Um, other places of folks that are literally homeless, you'll see people that'll ride the trains all night or ride the buses all night, just a, a place to stay warm. The results of the count will be reported to HUD and Congress, and will also determine the amount of grants awarded to different communities. Increasing awareness and letting people know that we're doing what we can to help bring re more resources to the region. For North Metro TV News, Danica Peterson reporting. The full data from the count won't be available for a few months.